Laudetur Jesus Christus. And welcome to our live streamed broadcast of Pope Francis General Audience for Wednesday, October 13th, 2021. And as usual, our Holy Father begins with the sign of the cross and the liturgical greeting. Now we'll hear the reading that the Pope will be reflecting on this morning, first in Italian and then in various other languages, including English. Voi infatti, fratelli, siete stati chiamati a libertà. Parola di Dio. De la lettre de Saint Paul apôtre aux Galates. Frères, c'est pour que nous soyons libres que le Christ nous a libérés. Alors tenez bon, ne vous mettez pas de nouveau sous le joug de l'esclavage. Vous avez été appelés à la liberté. Parole du Seigneur. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand fast, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. The word of the Lord. And we just heard a reading from Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 and 13. The Holy Father has been commenting in recent weeks on the letter to the Galatians for his catechesis during the general audience. As we hear the word of God in the other languages, repeating the same two verses, I'd like to welcome you to this live stream broadcast to Pope Francis' general audience. My name is Christopher Wells. I'll be providing the English language commentary and a translation of the Holy Father's remarks this morning. Whether you're joining us through the various Vatican media channels, the Vatican audio or radio app, the Vatican news web portal, or our YouTube channel, or via one of our partner stations, including We Are One Body Radio, Radio Luce, Radio Maria Papua New Guinea, Radio Oreb, Catholic Faith Network TV, Shalom World TV, Salt and Light TV, at Madrashan TV, EWTN TV, Catholic TV, or Luminous Radio. Welcome one and all this morning. As we mentioned, the Holy Father is taking up once again his catechesis on the letter to the Galatians. This morning, the Pope will be reflecting on the theme, Christian Freedom, the Universal Leaven of Liberation. After the reading is proclaimed in various languages, the Holy Father gives his catechesis in Italian. Again, I'll be providing a, an English translation for the Holy Father's comments. At the conclusion of the catechesis, we'll hear a summary of the Pope's teaching in the various languages, including English. Followed by the Pope's greetings for the various language groups, I'll provide a translation of those for you as well. And then at the conclusion of the audience, the Holy Father leads the faithful in the recitation of the Our Father in Latin. We have an opportunity to pray that together. And finally, the Holy Father concludes his audience with his apostolic blessing that's extended not only to those who are present, but to their friends and families, as well as to all of those listening in live on uh, the various forms of social communications, and to our friends and family as well. Ku wolności wyswobodził nas Chrystus, a zatem trwajcie w niej i nie poddawajcie się na nowo pod jarzmo niewoli. Wy zatem, bracia, powołani zostaliście do wolności. Oto Słowo Boże. That 
was the reading in Polish, and now the words of our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Cari fratelli e sorelle, buongiorno. Dear brothers and sisters, good morning. Buongiorno. Buongiorno and uh, once again, uh, good day. Encouraging the faithful to respond with a round of applause. In our itinerary of catechesis on the letter to the Galatians, we have been able to focus on what was for St. Paul the core of freedom. The fact that with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have been freed from the slavery of sin and death. In other words, we are free. We are free because we have been freed. Freed by grace. Not prepared, freed by love, which becomes the supreme and new law of Christian life and of love. We are free because we are freed, gratuitously. This is a, a key point. Today I'd like to emphasize how this novelty of life opens us up to welcoming every people and culture and at the same time opens every people and culture to a greater freedom. In fact, St. Paul says that for those who follow Christ, is no longer, it no longer matters if they are Jewish or pagan. The only thing that counts is faith working through charity. We are freed by faith working through love. Paul's detractors, uh, these fundamentalists who are there, attacked him over this novelty, claiming that he had taken this position out of pastoral opportunism, that is, to please everyone, minimizing the demands received from his uh, more strict religious tradition. The same, uh, the same uh, discourse of fundamentalists today, it's always the same. As we can see, the criticism of every evangelical novelty is not only of our time, but has a long history behind it. It, it repeats itself. Paul, however, does not remain silent. He responds with courage, with parousia, a Greek word that indicates courage and strength. And he says, am I now seeking the favor of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still pleasing men, I would not be a servant of Christ. That's from Galatians. Already in his first letter to the Thessalonians, he had expressed himself in similar terms, saying that in his preaching he had never used words of flattery or a cloak for greed, nor did we seek glory from men. These are the paths of those who make a pretense, uh, either faith or not faith, uh, worldliness. Paul's thinking, yet again, shows an inspired depth. To welcome faith for him involves renouncing not the heart of cultures and traditions, but only that which may hinder the newness and purity of the gospel. Because the freedom obtained through the death and resurrection of the Lord does not enter into conflict with cultures, doesn't enter into conflict with the traditions we have received, but rather introduces into them 
in these uh, cultures and these traditions, it introduces into them a new freedom, a liberating novelty that is the, uh, that of the gospel. Indeed, the liberation obtained through baptism enables us to acquire the full dignity of children of God, so that while we remain firmly anchored in our cultural roots, at the same time, we open ourselves to the universalism of the faith that enters into every culture, recognizes the kernels of truth present in them, and develops them, bring them to the fullness, bring to fullness the goodness contained in them. We are freed by Christ, by his passion, by his death, by his resurrection in order to accept the fullness of the diversity of traditions of the peoples, the, full, the true fullness. In the call to freedom, we discover the true meaning of the enculturation of the gospel. The sense of enculturation uh, brings the culture in which we live, in which the Christian community lives. It gives it the, the true meaning of the enculturation of the gospel, being able to announce the good news of Christ the Savior, respecting the good and the true that exists in cultures. It's not an easy thing. There are many temptations to seek to impose one's own model of life as though it were the most evolved and the most appealing. How many errors have been made in the history of evangelization by seeking to impose a single cultural model? Uniformity. Uniformity in the rule of life is not Christian. Unity, yes. Uniformity, no. At times, even violence was not spared in order to make a single point of view prevail. Uh, it's like a war. In this way, the church has been deprived of the richness of many local expressions that the cultural traditions of entire peoples bring with them. But this is the exact opposite of Christian freedom. For example, I have in mind uh, when I was stopped uh, he talks about the, the conflict between uh, some Christian missionaries in China and India uh, historically. In short, uh, he continues, Paul's vision of freedom is entirely enlightened and rendered fruitful by the mystery of uh, Christ, who in his incarnation, as the Second Vatican Council recalls, unite himself in a certain way with every person. Again, not uh, in uniformity, but in uh, variety, in diversity. Hence, the duty to respect the cultural origin of every person, placing them in a space of freedom that is not restricted by any imposition dictated by a single predominant culture. This is the meaning of calling ourselves Catholics, of speaking of the Catholic Church. It's not a sociological denomination to distinguish, it, to distinguish us from other Christians, no. Catholic is an adjective, an adjective that means universal. Catholicity, universality a universal church, the Catholic Church. It means that the church contains in herself, in her very nature, an openness to all peoples and cultures of all times because Christ was born, died, and rose again for everyone, for everyone. Culture besides is by its very nature in continual transformation. If one thinks about how we are called to proclaim the gospel in this historical moment of great cultural change, where an ever more advanced technology seems to have the upper hand, if we were to speak of faith as we did in, in previous generations, 
we would run the risk of no longer being understood by the new generations. The freedom of the Christian faith, Christian liberty, does not indicate a static vision of life, a static vision of culture, but rather a dynamic vision of a dynamic vision, a dynamic vision of tradition that grows, that grows, that grows. Uh, but in the same nature, let us not claim, therefore, to possess freedom. No, instead, we have received a gift to take care of. Rather, it is a freedom that asks each one of us to be constantly on the move, oriented towards its fullness. It's the condition of pilgrims. It's the state of wayfarers in continual exodus, liberated from slavery so as to walk towards the fullness of freedom. And this is a great gift given us by Jesus Christ, the Lord. He liberates us from slavery freely and puts us uh, on the road uh, to walk forward in the fullness of liberty. Thank you. Those are the Holy Father's uh, remarks for today, commenting on a passage from the letter to the Galatians. And now we hear uh, greetings in various languages, beginning with French. The speaker gives a brief explanation. Then uh, greets uh, uh, the Holy Father in their own language and then gives a summary again in their own language of the Holy Father's remarks which we have just heard. We won't repeat those because they are essentially the same in each of the uh, various languages that we'll hear this morning. After the summary, the Holy Father in Italian will greet the uh, uh, French speakers, the English speakers, the German speakers as they, as they come along. And the Pope's remarks in Italian are afterwards repeated by the speaker, and I'll give an English language translation of each of those. C'est l'inculturation de l'Évangile qui n'est pas une chose facile. L'Église a en elle-même une ouverture universelle à tous les peuples de tous les temps. C'est le sens du mot « catholique », car le Christ est né, mort et ressuscité pour tous les hommes. La liberté chrétienne n'est jamais définitivement acquise. Dans un monde en perpétuelle transformation, elle est un don que nous devons garder et faire grandir jusqu'à sa plénitude. Et maintenant, sa sainteté va saluer en italien les francophones. Saluto cordialmente i pellegrini di lingua francese, in particolare le parrocchie di Notre-Dame de Champs et de Cognac. Come pellegrini di un cammino a volte difficile e doloroso, andiamo con gioia verso la liberazione definitiva dal peccato e dalla morte che ci offre Gesù Cristo. Testimoniamo a tutti questa via di felicità e di pace. Dio vi benedica. I cordially greet the French-speaking pilgrims, especially the parishes of Notre-Dame-de-Champs and de Cognac, as pilgrims on a sometimes difficult and painful journey. Let us go with joy towards the definitive liberation from sin and death which Jesus Christ offers us. Let us witness to all this way of happiness and peace. May God bless you. And now we will hear English. Most Holy Father, the English-speaking visitors and pilgrims present today wish to express to you their sentiments of respect and esteem and to assure you of their prayers for your ministry as the successor of Peter. At the end of the audience, we will sing together the Our Father in Latin. 
The Holy Father will then impart his apostolic blessing, which he willingly extends to all children and young people, the elderly and the sick. His Holiness also intends to bless any religious articles you may have brought for this purpose. The following is a summary of the Holy Father's words this morning. Dear brothers and sisters, in our continuing catechesis on St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, we have seen that our new life of freedom in Christ comes as an unmerited gift of God's grace through baptism, which makes us sharers in the Lord's saving passion, death, and resurrection. We have been set free by love, which becomes the new and supreme law of the Christian life. This gospel message of our liberation is universal, addressed to all men and women and to every people and culture. Indeed, the gospel is meant to be enculturated in every time and place. The church's Catholicity, her universality, is not found in uniformity of style or custom or the imposition of any one cultural model, but in her respect for all that is good and true in each people and culture. As the church seeks to enculturate the gospel in contemporary culture, including today's rapidly developing technological and media culture, may we respond creatively in proclaiming to all peoples the good news of the freedom won for us by Christ, the universal Savior. The Holy Father will now greet the English-speaking faithful in Italian. Saluti pellegrini di lingua inglese presenti all'odierna udienza, specialmente i gruppi provenienti dagli Stati Uniti di America. In questo mese di ottobre, attraverso l'intercessione della Madonna, Regina del Rosario, possiamo crescere nella libertà cristiana che abbiamo ricevuto nel Battesimo. Su tutti voi e sulle vostre famiglie invoco la gioia e la pace del Signore. Dio vi benedica. I greet the English-speaking pilgrims and visitors taking part in today's audience, especially the groups from the United States of America. In this month of October, through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary, may we grow in the Christian freedom that we received at baptism. Upon all of you and your families, I invoke the joy and peace of the Lord. May God bless you. Following English, we'll hear from uh, German speakers. Heiliger Vater, Die Gläubigen deutscher Sprache bekunden Ihnen, dem Nachfolger des heiligen Petrus, aufrichtige Verbundenheit, Dankbarkeit und Verehrung. Sie versichern Sie zugleich Ihres besonderen Gebetsgedenkens für Ihren apostolischen Dienst als Hirte der universalen Kirche. Zum Schluss dieser Audienz singen wir gemeinsam das Vater Unser in lateinischer Sprache. Danach wird der Heilige Vater allen den apostolischen Segen erteilen. Gern schließt er darin ihre Angehörigen ein, besonders die Kranken, die Kinder und die älteren Menschen. Zugleich segnet er auch die Rosenkränze und die übrigen Andachtsgegenstände, die sie dafür mitgebracht haben. Es folgt nun eine Zusammenfassung der Katechese des Heiligen Vaters in deutscher Sprache. Liebe Brüder und Schwestern, in unseren Betrachtungen über den Brief des Apostels Paulus an die Galater haben wir den inneren Kern der wahren Freiheit herausstellen können. Diese beruht darauf, dass Christus in seinem Tod und seiner Auferstehung uns von der Knechtschaft der Sünde und des Todes befreit hat. Wir sind frei, weil wir befreit wurden. Die Liebe hat uns befreit, welche selbst zum Neuen und obersten Gesetz des christlichen Lebens geworden ist. Diese Neuheit schenkt jedem Volk und jeder Kultur eine größere Freiheit, da sie in Christus ihre Vollendung und ihr Ziel finden. Aus diesem Grund besteht nach dem heiligen Paulus für die, die Christus angehören, 
kein Unterschied mehr zwischen Juden und Heiden. Vielmehr zählt nur noch der Glaube, der durch die Liebe wirkt. Paulus nimmt für diese Neuheit ein Anfeindungen in Kauf, nicht weil er den Menschen gefallen will, sondern weil er überzeugt ist von der Wahrheit des Evangeliums. Auch heute steht die Kirche in ihrer Universalität für alle Völker und Kulturen offen, die die Befreiung in Christus annehmen wollen. Rivolgo un cordiale saluto ai fedeli di lingua tedesca. La Beata Vergine Maria, di cui quest'oggi ricordiamo le apparizioni a Fatima, sia la nostra guida sul cammino di continua conversione e penitenza per andare incontro a Cristo, sole di giustizia. La sua luce ci liberi da ogni male e disperta le tenebre di questo mondo. I extend a cordial greeting to the German-speaking faithful. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, whose apparitions at Fatima we commemorate today, be our guide on the path of continual conversion and penance, so that we may encounter Christ, the Son of Justice. May her light free us from every evil and dispel the darkness of this world. The Holy Father himself who will read the summary of his catechesis in Spanish, as that is his native language. After the greetings from the Spanish-speaking faithful and the instructions from the speaker, and once again I'll offer a translation when the Holy Father concludes the summary and offers his own greetings to Spanish-speaking Catholics and visitors. Bendicirá también los rosarios y objetos de redevoción que los peregrinos llevan consigo. Queridos hermanos y hermanas, hoy reflexionamos sobre una consecuencia de la libertad que hemos recibido de Cristo que nos lleva a acoger a todos los pueblos y culturas y al mismo tiempo hace capaces a esos mismos pueblos y culturas de abrirse a Él, a Jesús. Acoger la fe no supone renunciar en su esencia a las propias raíces, a las propias tradiciones, sino solo a lo que obstaculiza la novedad y pureza del Evangelio. Este es el verdadero sentido de la inculturación, que podamos anunciar a Cristo Salvador respetando lo bueno y auténtico que existe en cada cultura y en cada sociedad, considerando también su continua evolución. La libertad de la fe cristiana es dinámica y el don que hemos de custodiar nos exige que vivamos esa libertad en un peregrinaje continuo, orientados hacia la plenitud que todos estamos llamados a alcanzar. I cordially greet the Spanish-speaking faithful. I I encourage you to maintain a spirit of pilgrimage, always on the move, falling together in the footsteps of Christ with freedom and joy, towards that homeland to which God is calling us. May the Lord bless you. Thank you very much. The next language we'll hear is Portuguese. Santo Padre, os peregrinos da língua portuguesa presentes nesta audiência e quantos nos acompanham através dos meios de comunicação social testemunham a vossa santidade, sentimentos de gratidão e afeto filial que acompanham com as suas orações pelas vossas intenções de pastor universal da Igreja. No final da audiência, cantaremos o Pai Nosso em latim, 
Depois, o Santo Padre concederá a todos a bênção apostólica com um pensamento especial às crianças, aos idosos, aos doentes e atribulados. Abençoará também os terços e demais objetos de devoção que os peregrinos presentes tenham consigo. Leio agora um resumo da catequese que o Papa Francisco acaba de propor. Na chamada à liberdade, tal como Paulo a explica na Carta aos Gálatas, descobrimos o verdadeiro sentido da enculturação do Evangelho. Ser capazes de anunciar a boa nova de Cristo Salvador, respeitando aquilo que existe de bom e verdadeiro nas culturas. A visão paulina da liberdade é inteiramente iluminada e fecundada pelo mistério de Cristo, que pela sua encarnação, como recorda o Concílio Vaticano II, se uniu de certo modo a cada homem. Assim, a liberdade que Jesus nos alcançou com a sua morte e ressurreição não entra em conflito com as culturas e tradições que recebemos. Na verdade, o batismo permite-nos obter a plena liberdade de filhos de Deus. E ao mesmo tempo que permanecemos inseridos nas nossas raízes culturais, abrimos-nos ao universalismo da fé, que penetra e abraça todas as culturas, desenvolvendo até à plenitude as sementes de bem nelas inserido. Segundo explica o apóstolo, acolher a fé obriga a renunciar, não ao coração das culturas e tradições, mas apenas àquilo que nelas possa obstaculizar a novidade e pureza do Evangelho. Para quem adera a Jesus, não conta ser circuncidado ou não circuncidado, ser judeu ou pagão. O que conta é a fé que atua pelo amor. A Igreja tem na sua própria natureza a abertura a todos os povos e às culturas de todos os tempos, porque Cristo nasceu, morreu e ressuscitou por todos. Agora, o Santo Padre saúda em italiano os peregrinos e ouvintes da língua portuguesa. Cari fedeli de língua portuguesa, vi saluto tutti. E vi auguro che si rinsaldi sempre di più nei vostri cuori il sentire e il vivere con la Chiesa, perseverando nella preghiera quotidiana del Rosario. Potrete così incontrarvi ogni giorno con la Vergine Madre, imparando da lei a cooperare pienamente con i piani di salvezza che Dio ha per ciascuno. Il Signore benedica voi e i vostri cari. Eis. To your Portuguese, if speaking faithful, I greet you all, and I wish you to strengthen ever more in your hearts the feeling and the living with the Church, ever more in your hearts the feeling and living with the Church, persevering in the daily prayer of the Rosary. In this way, you will be able to meet the Virgin Mother every day, learning from her to cooperate fully with the plans of salvation which God has for each one of you. May the Lord bless you and your loved ones. Que Deus tem sobre cada um. O Senhor vos abençoe, a vós e aos vossos entes queridos. Next, we'll hear greetings from the Arabic speaking faithful. Ayuha Labul Akdas, Yasurul Mu'minun al Natukuna Biluga Til Arabia, Tabira Lakum Man Mashar al Ihtaram Wat Takdir, Mufami Bim Tenanim al Banawi. إنهم يؤكدون صلاتهم لقداستكم ولشخصكم ولخدمتكم كخليفة القديس بطرس في نهاية هذه المقابلة سنرتل معا صلاة الأبان باللغة اللاتينية ثم سيمنح قداسة الباب البركة الرسولية لكم ولجميع أحبائكم أيضا وخاصة الأطفال والمتزوجين حديثا والمرضى والمتألمين وسيبارك كذلك المسابح والأشياء الخاصة بالتقويات التي جئتم بها لهذا الغرض إليكم ملخص التعليم المسيحي لقداس البابا فرانسيس 
تكلم قداسة البابا على الحرية المسيحية بكونها خميرة شاملة للتحرير في إطار تعليمي في الرسالة إلى أهل غلاطية قال تساعد الحرية المسيحية أن نرى ما هو جديد في الحياة لذلك إن قبول الإيمان بحسب بولس الرسول لا يقتضي التخلي عن قلب الثقافات والتقاليد بل التخلي فقط عما يمكن أن يعيق ما هو جديد في الإنجيل وطهارته الحرية التي أعطيت لنا بموت الرب يسوع وقيامته لا تدخلنا في نزاع مع الثقافات ومع التقاليد التي تلقيناها لأنها تحتوي على حرية جديدة محررة هي حرية الإنجيل التي تساعدنا أن نبقى متجذرين في جذورنا الثقافية وفي الوقت نفسه تفتح أنفسنا على شمولية الإيمان الذي يندمج في كل ثقافة ويعترف ببذور الحقيقة الموجودة فيها ويطورها فيحمل الخير الموجود فيها إلى الكمال الحرية المسيحية تساعدنا أن نعلن بشر المسيح المخلص وأن نحترم ما هو جيد وحقيقي في جميع الثقافات وقد سميت الكنيسة الكاثوليكية بهذا الاسم لأنها كنيسة جامعة ومنفتحة على جميع الشعوب والثقافات في كل الأوقات لأن المسيح ولد ومات وقام من أجل الجميع والآن تحية البابا باللغة الإيطالية لأبناء الشرق الناطقين اللغة العربية Saluto i fratelli di lingua araba. La libertà della fede cristiana non indica una visione statica della vita, della cultura, ma dinamica e chiede a ciascuno di essere in costante cammino orientati verso la sua pienezza. Il Signore vi benedica a tutti e vi protegga sempre da ogni male. I greet the Arabic-speaking faithful. The freedom of the Christian faith does not indicate a static vision of life and culture, but a dynamic one, asking each one to be on a constant journey, oriented towards its fullness. May the Lord bless you all and protect you always from every evil. Polish follows after Arabic in the general audience. We'll hear Polish now. Ojcze Święty, pielgrzymi z Polski i z innych krajów pragną złożyć Waszej świątobliwości najserdeczniejsze wyrazy czci i oddania oraz zapewnić o swojej modlitwie we wszystkich intencjach związanych z apostolską posługą następcy Piotra. Na zakończenie audiencji zaśpiewamy wspólnie modlitwę Ojcze Nasz po łacinie. Następnie Ojciec Święty udzieli wszystkim swojego apostolskiego błogosławieństwa, obejmując nim szczególnie dzieci, osoby w podeszłym wieku i dotknięte cierpieniem. Pobłogosławi też różańce i inne dewocjonalia, jakie pielgrzymi przynieśli ze sobą. Streszczenie katechezy Ojca Świętego. Drodzy bracia i siostry, w naszych katechezach na temat listu do Galatów mogliśmy uwypuklić to, co święty Paweł uważa za fundament wolności. Fakt, że przez śmierć i zmartwychwstanie Jezusa Chrystusa zostaliśmy wyzwoleni z niewoli grzechu i śmierci. Wolność, o której wspomina apostoł narodów, nie stoi w sprzeczności z otrzymanymi przez nas kulturami i tradycjami. Wyzwolenie zyskane przez chrzest pozwala nam otworzyć się na uniwersalizm wiary, która wkracza w każdą kulturę. Dla tych, którzy przystąpili do Chrystusa, nie ma już znaczenia, czy są Żydami, czy Poganami. Liczy się tylko wiara, która działa przez miłość. Pawłowa wizja wolności przypomina obowiązek poszanowania pochodzenia kulturowego każdej osoby. Taki jest sens nazywania siebie katolikami i mówienia o Kościele katolickim. Katolicki to przymiotnik, który oznacza powszechny. Dlatego też Kościół posiada w swojej naturze otwartość na wszystkie narody i kultury, 
ponieważ Chrystus umarł i z martwych stał za wszystkich. Wolność wiary chrześcijańskiej nie ukazuje statycznej wizji życia i kultury, lecz wizję dynamiczną. Wolność jest darem, którego należy strzec i który wymaga od każdego z nas bycia nieustannie w drodze. Jest to sytuacja pielgrzymów, jest to stan nieustannego wędrowania, wyzwolenia z niewoli, aby podążać ku pełni wolności. Obecnie Ojciec Święty pozdrowi wszystkich Polaków w języku włoskim. Saluto cordialmente tutti Polacchi. Questa settimana ricorre un anniversario delle lezioni di San Giovanni Paolo II e le memorie liturgiche di San Giovanni XXIII, Santa Teresa d'Avila e Santa Edvige di Slesia. Le loro vite sono chiari esempi di libertà cristiana. L'esperienza di questi santi vi ricordi che non esiste libertà senza responsabilità e senza amore per la verità. E la più grande realizzazione della libertà e la carità che si concretizza nel servizio. Mi benedico di cuore. I cordially greet all Poles. This week marks the anniversary of the election of St. John Paul II to the papacy and the liturgical memorials of St. John XXIII, St. Teresa of Avila, and St. Hedwig of Silesia. Their lives are clear examples of Christian freedom. The experience of these saints reminds you that there is no freedom without responsibility and, with lo and without love for the truth. And the greatest realization of freedom is charity, which is made concrete in service. I bless you from the heart. And finally, we'll hear greetings of the Holy Father in Italian, without a summary, since, of course, he already gave the catechesis in Italian. A, conclusio, a conclusione di questa udienza canteremo la preghiera del Padre Nostro in latino, terminata la quale il Santo Padre impartirà la benedizione apostolica che estende in modo speciale ai bambini, agli anziani e ai sofferenti. Benedirà anche i rosari e gli oggetti di devozione che ciascuno porta con sé. Un cordiale benvenuto ai pellegrini. I extend a cordial welcome to the Italian-speaking pilgrims. Saluto le suore serve di Maria. I greet the sisters servants of Mary Riparatrice who are celebrating their general chapter and I encourage them to continue their service to the gospel and to their brothers and sisters with fidelity and joy. I greet the Scalabrinian sisters who are participating in a formation course, and I encourage them to be generous witnesses of hospitality and fraternity. Continue in this good work. I greet and thank the delegation of the community of Cervia, who have come here with the traditional gift of salt. Il mio pensiero va infine, come di consueto, agli anziani. And finally, as usual, my thoughts go to the elderly, the sick, the young, and the newlyweds. Today we remember the final apparition of Our Lady of Fatima to the Heavenly Mother of God, I entrust all of you, that she may accompany you with maternal tenderness on your journey and be a comfort to you in the trials of life. And my blessings to all. Now the Holy Father uh, will lead us in the Our Father in Latin, followed by his apostolic blessing. Pater Noster, quies in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celum. Oh. 
moribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem, sed libera nos amalo. Dominus obiscum, et cum spiritu tu, sit nomen Domini benedictum, ex hoc nunc et usco in secum, aiterium nostrum in nomine Domini, qui feci celum et terram. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Santus. Amen. And we have just received the blessing of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, a reminder that that blessing does go out to, to all of those not only present in the Paul VI Hall, but also to all of us who are able to listen in live to the Holy Father's audience. And with the Holy Father's blessing, the general audience for today, Wednesday, October 13th, comes to an end. My name is Christopher Wells. It's been a great pleasure providing the English language translation of today's general audience. On behalf of Vatican Radio, I'd like to thank all of our partners who help make these live broadcasts available throughout the world, especially We Are One Body Radio, Radio Luce, Radio Maria, Papua New Guinea, Radio Horeb, Catholic Faith Network in America, Luminous Radio in India, Catholic TV, EWTN TV, Atmajarshan TV, also from India, Salt and Light TV in Canada, and Shalom World TV. Thanks, too, to all of our producers and technicians here in the, state, in the studio who make this broadcast possible. And thank you to all of you for joining us this morning. For full coverage of today's catechesis, which will eventually include the full text of the Pope's teaching and the video of this morning's catechesis, along with other Vatican and world news, we invite you to visit the Vatican News web portal at www.vaticannews.va, as well as our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube accounts. This concludes our live stream broadcast of Pope Francis' general audience of October 13th, 2021. Praise be Jesus Christ. Laudetur Jesus Christus.